Hello, welcome to my little shed in the woods. I've been here for a year and a half now and it's starting to look somewhat acceptable. So I thought I'd give some context to the build videos and talk a bit about what I like and what I plan to change. I'm obviously very new to woodworking and I don't know what I'm doing at all. So please don't take anything in this or other videos of mine as instructions or well opinions even because I don't have opinions yet. I'm just experimenting and trying to find my way to enjoy hand tool woodworking. According to the analytics, the majority of views on my videos are from people who don't subscribe. So statistically, you probably have no idea who I am. That's cool, that's fine. Hang along anyway, it might be fun. Coming into the building, the first room is kind of meant to be a kitchen, I guess. I use it primarily as my sharpening station because, well, there's a sink. There's running water here in the summer. It's turned off now, though. I use these Japanese water stones for sharpening, so it's very convenient to have tap water right next to them. But even in the summer, when the water is on, I also use this bottle with a tiny hole in the cork to just dispense a small controllable amount of water when needed. I don't use any jigs for sharpening, not that I have anything against it, I just don't think it seems necessary and I'd rather not invest in one. I keep a small square here though, that's very useful. Also I have this really coarse plate for heavy stock removal and this is just a piece of MDF with a buffing compound on it for final polishing. So moving into the actual shop, we first and foremost have my main bench. Every component of every single project spends most of its time on the bench, so it really is the most important object in here. The cabinet part of it is uh, an old factory-made uh, pine dresser that I modified and reinforced and added a workshop to. I made a video about that, I guess the link will be here-ish. The face vise is uh, a bench-crafted leg vise kit. I made a separate video about installing that because that was quite the adventure, but it works super well. I am so freaking pleased with this uh, with this vise. I have a sliding dead man. Works slightly less well, but most of the time it's fine. I use the cabinet for storing scraps. Scraps. No, what scraps are. Uh, it keeps the weight uh, up, which keeps the bench down, and it uh, prevents me from just piling scraps on the floor, which I 100% would do if I didn't have this. Above the bench I have my tool wall. The concept? Yay. Having all my tools right in front of me when I'm working is the way to go for me. The execution? I might redo the whole thing sometime. Or not. It's not horrible. It works. It could be a lot nicer. Uh, these um, uh, are my bench chisels. Just the normal chisels. Here are um, mortising chisels with a thicker steel. This is a set of dovetail chisels for getting into sharp corners. And these are various carving tools. This set of four is uh, the only ones I bought new, if I recall correctly. All the others were um, flea market finds, eBay buys, and two hand-me-downs. Coincidentally, these have the worst handles. I think <laughs> they are awful. At least they are wood, so I can re-carve them into something better. Oh, and these pencil holders, of course, I have to show. Uh, my mom made them from ceramic clay, I think is the word. And I just added a block of wood on the back to work on my French cleat wall. They have leads on them and they are awesome. Here is a storage system I did replace. I made a video about a year ago about a shelf I made to hang the sauce on, but it was sagging and it looked bad, so I remade it into this thing. These are just some things I reach for all the time. My winding sticks, a brush for sweeping curls off the bench, my Paul Sellers style rag in a can oiler. I found this great uh, guacamole can to use for it. The guac was pretty bad, it needed a lot more avocado to be honest. But it had this uh, lid, very soft plastic, almost silicon-like, that keeps uh, the dust off the rag. I use uh, sewing machine oil on it. Other types are available. Just 
obviously don't use a drying oil like linseed oil because if you do you are making a ticking firebomb further down here it gets more and more disorganized but uh, this box uh, I just keep sandpaper in also a bag of shellac flakes shooting board resawing slash curfing jig and this is just a planing stop I sometimes screw to the top of the bench to plane thin stock against and this is an old toolbox I made before I even had a workbench I just store some less beautiful saws there some of these I'm gonna give an updo like the two on the wall some are not really worth the trouble and some are dull and non resharpenable but have a personal value so I'm keeping them anyway these white cubes are polystyrene boxes. I keep my glue some finishes in them because they are insulating and this place is only heated while I'm here so it could theoretically drop below freezing. When it's warmer I put the glue some stuff in this space behind there to free up a bit of space. Moving to the other side of the bench, here's another white cube. Here are things I don't use that often because these drawers are rustic and charming and I like them but they jam all the time. I keep planing them down and they keep jamming up. Here are screws, uh, nails, dowels, random things honestly. <laughs> Drill bits and more drilling stuff. This brace is awesome. It was in a thrift store and they had another one that was uh, also fully functional and a quarter of the price. But I had to get this one because it's beautiful and I'm weak. I mean it was still dirt cheap for such a good tool because no one wants this. It's incredible how fast you can drill big holes with this though. Sausat. Sausat files, scrap of leather, some string. It's mainly sourced some files. Hand planes. Yes, let's talk about hand planes. This arrangement as seen in this video. It works uh, very well, I'm pleased with it. I had to add these uh, little toggle locks on the smaller planes because without them they are too, a little bit too close to tipping out. I should have built the whole thing on a less steep angle but oh well it's fine. This is probably my favorite tool that I own. It's an American made Stanley number seven from about 1910 I believe and the quality of manufacturing on this thing is just out of this world. The blade holds an edge forever without being hard to sharpen at all. The handle feels so good, the knob feels great and it just feels amazing to use. It's hard to explain why a plane feels good to use but some planes feel good to use and this is one of them. This is probably my most used plane. It's also an American made Stanley. Slightly newer, still extremely well done. Awesome handle, awesome blade. This is a British Stanley. Same size as this one, but slightly newer again. It has these uh, router made roundovers instead of actually being shaped to the hand. I have put a, a small camber on the blade to make it act a bit like a scrub plane. It's too big to be a proper scrub plane. If I tried to take like a full sixteenth uh, of an inch uh, shaving with it, it would just get stuck obviously because it's so wide. But a slight camber still means I can take shavings across the grain. I can take fairly heavy cuts with it. It's my main roughing plane and it's good at its job. This tiny thing I found in an antique store. It's probably not particularly antique, it's made of plastic, but it was cute and I wanted it. <laughs> These two are from a Swedish manufacturer called Anchor. It's a number four and a number three. I haven't tuned them up, uh, so I'm not using them yet. 
I plan to make the number 4 my dedicated smoother. I kind of use this number 5 as a smoother now and it's not ideal, it's too long. I should be using a number 4 and that's what I'm planning to do. The number 3 will become a scrub plane with a very large camber, or I mean very small radius camber, so it can take a very deep cut. This is my only Lee Nielsen indulgence, a low angle jack plane. It's fantastic on end grain, of course, that's what it's made to do. It's not so great on anything else than end grain, I found. It's really nice to have, but it is an indulgence. You do not need a Lee Nielsen low angle plane. You can use a $1, $5 thrift store find, restore it, use that. Oh and below, these are my most commonly used weirdo planes. Primarily the rebate plane, or rabbit plane. I use that quite a lot actually. And an Ulrich router. This is not a weird plane, it's a block plane. It used to live up here, but that's a little bit too precarious. So, he goes there now. Behind them is my power tool corner. I never intended this to be a permanent place for anything, but my yellow machines seem to like it back here, so I guess I should build cubbies for them or something. Here are some really long uh, clamps that I made. There is a video about that too. Again, it sort of degrades as we go down into a bit of a mess of homeless things and storage of stuff I tell myself I'm going to use someday. These are my sawhorses, heavily inspired by those seen on the Ishitani Furniture channel. Very good channel. I think the build video on this is still my most popular video, although most comments are focusing on how I'm not wearing shoes. So if you want to yell at me for exhibiting insufficient footwear, that's where it's at. Let it be known, my toes are now protected. Anyway, I don't use these very often, and I think they will be more useful in a future larger shop. But they don't take much space and I don't mind storing them here. Oh, and behind we have some things for an upcoming secret project. So nothing to see there. This corner is basically storage for wood that doesn't like being outside. Beach degrades very quickly outside, I found, so that goes here. These wide beach boards are going to become a tool chest eventually. Uh, I have some plywood, I don't use that a lot, but it's good for certain things. Some nicer uh, oak veneered plywood. This oak laminated uh, tabletop could really go outside, but it's made its home here and won't move. Next is my secondary bench. Thank you to my friend who helped me bring it out here. You are probably not watching, but it was massively appreciated. I really like this thing. There's a factory label somewhere underneath. It doesn't say when it was made, but it seems to be in the region of a hundred years old. I actually think it's supposed to be a children's bench, because I'm a short boy, and this is too low even for me. But it's just so beautiful. Again, I'm keeping some wood underneath to give it more weight. This is going to become end grain cutting boards someday, I hope. Here's a spoon my brother is working on. I think it looks really good. I need to make some spoons. Seems fun. Oh, and here are my tiny sawhorses. These were very helpful when I was working on the secretary desk recently. Or, well, it was not recently, it was several months ago, but it feels super recently. Just getting it a little bit off the floor was very nice to get some height on it, to be able to work underneath it, etc. Very well worth making a pair of these, I think. And that's a tool chest I started and never finished. Sorry about that if you were watching those videos. I made a few bad choices on it because I didn't know what I'm doing, even less so back then. But I have a similar design with better construction in mind now, so that's a project I'm eager to embark on. Soon. And above the small bench is my latest storage addition, my clamp rack. Most of my clamps are this, uh, this kind, just because they're the most common to find in you know, the garage sales and the flea markets, etc. But I honestly prefer these in just about every way, except how they are new and have no history, you know. Also, I made a shelf here for my specialty planes. Almost all of these were one big 
hall that I was super lucky to find uh, a, a box full of rust and dirt and these beautiful old planes. I haven't restored any of them though, they do need a bit of love. Coming across the kitchen opening we have the safety corner. Gotta have a blanket, some first aid stuff and an extinguisher. This table was here when I bought the place. The old owner left it and uh, well I've been planning to restore it. I'm still planning to restore it. Just need to uh, glue down the veneer in a couple of places. Scrape off the old finish, put some new finish on. I, I still want to do that, but I just don't know what I'm gonna do with it afterwards. So I've kind of been putting that off. But it's gonna be done sometime. Also, that's my little heater. It runs on kerosene, which I honestly hate. But it's literally the only heating solution that I A can afford and B is feasible. I mean I'd love to have a wood burning stove, that would be amazing, but it's not allowed by some regulations on the forest this house is built in. It's understandable, honestly. Kerosene, bad though. And finally, here is the wood stash. How I have been able to accumulate this amount, I do not understand. But basically all of it is reclaimed, which I'm a little bit proud of. Just like with my tools, I really prefer when I can work with materials that have history, even if I don't know what that history is. I do keep most of my wood outside, as you can see. It's under a roof, so it's fairly protected. Nothing is rotting so far, so it seems good. I won't talk about every board, though I probably could, but here are some birch cookies a friend's dad helped me cut with a chainsaw, that was very appreciated. And I think they will become like uh, small stools or side tables or something like that. Some nice uh, small live edge oak. This piece of walnut was left over from a dining table, a massive dining table I built uh, about a year and a half ago. It's probably my most precious piece of wood. Here's some more of the curly maple that I built the uh, hand tool rack from. I think it's maple anyway. It's definitely curly. Here are some small logs, mostly oak. I plan to split them into uh, quarter sawn pieces for uh, drawer fronts and other small components. And here is a ton of pine. Some of it was uh, left over from the window sills I made recently. Some of it came out of a wall I helped uh, tear down in an old house. So that's uh, some very nice old pine. Also some tropical stuff, no idea what this is. I mean, I don't know the species, but it's sold as deck material to use instead of pressure treated wood. Sometimes I can find scraps of that. So it's probably teak, I suppose. And down here I have a small stash of something that I think might be mahogany. Some kind of mahogany. I'm not sure. They were scraps someone gave me. Um, they they feel a bit like walnut in hardness, um, very light and very pretty. I'm looking forward to making something fun with that. There's a bit of live edge on this one. I always get so excited by live edge even though I most often end up cutting it away, but it's nice to have the possibility to keep it, the option to keep it. And that's it, I think. 16 square meters, including the kitchen space. No heating, water only in the summer, no electricity. Everyone is so confused when I say I do woodworking in a shed without power, but really, 
That's how all woodworking was done not that long ago. I don't have anything against machines. As you saw, I have a few battery tools. But hand tools bring so much more joy for me. And it's a lot cheaper, of course, so there's that. No power consumption is pretty sweet, but also you can get stuff done in a much smaller space as well. That's worth a lot if you live in a city. It's quiet, it's hard, satisfying work, and it's fun on a level deeper than pretty much everything else for me. So yeah, hope it was enjoyable listening to my rambling. I'm not a professional. I don't have anything to teach. This is just me sharing my thoughts and my work. Join me as I'm learning fine woodworking. Thanks for watching.